In this video, we're going to talk about how to find the area under a curve of a function that is parametrically defined. So let's say that x is equal to t squared and y is equal to 4t squared minus t to the fourth power. And we want to find the area under the curve where t is bounded between 0 and 2, and it's going to be between the curve and the x-axis. So what formula should we use? Now let's say if we have some function where y is equal to f of x. And we wish to find the area under the curve from a to b. The area under this curve will be the integral from a to b of f of x dx. So in this case, we can see that y is f of x. So we can say that the definite integral from a to b y dx will give us the same area. Now let's say that x, let me write it down here, is equal to f of t. And let's say that y is g of t. In that case, we can replace y with g of t. Now if we differentiate both sides, we can get the differential dx is equal to f prime of t times dt. So therefore, we can say that the area is going to be the integral of g of t. So we replace the y with g of t, and then replace in dx with f prime of t dt. We get this expression. And the limits of integration will change from a and b to alpha and beta, where alpha and beta represent t values. And so this is the formula that we want to use when finding the area under a curve of a parametric function. So let's begin by graphing this parametric function. Let's make a table. So we're going to have t, x, and y. So let's start with t equals 0. When t is 0, we can see that x is going to be 0, and y is going to be 0 as well. Now what about when t is 1, and when t is 2? So x will be 1 squared, which is 1, and when t is 2, x is going to be 2 squared, which is 4. Now let's find the y values. So when t is 1, this is going to be 4 minus 1, which is 3. And when t is 2, two squared is 4, 2 to the fourth power is 16, 16 minus 16 is 0. So y is 0. Now let's go ahead and plot the points. So when x is 0, y is 0. And when x is 1, y is 3. And when x is 4, y is 0. Now, it looks like we need a few more points, because if we graph it, it's going to look something like this. But let's just see what's happening in the middle. So when x is 2, what is y? Using this equation, when x is 2, 2 is equal to t squared and t is going to be the square root of 2. Now let's go ahead and plug that value into this equation. So y is equal to 4t squared. t squared is 2 minus t to the fourth power. So that's the square root of 2 raised to the fourth power. So this is 8. And the square root of 2 is basically 2 to the 1 half raised to the fourth power. 1 half times 4 is 2, so that becomes 2 squared, which is 4, so y is 4. So when x is 2, y has a value of 4. Now what about when x is 3?
when x is 3, t is going to be the square root of 3. So now we need to calculate y. So it's going to be 4t squared, and t squared is 3, minus t to the fourth, or the square root of 3 raised to the fourth power. So 4 times 3 is 12, and the square root of 3 to the fourth power, that's 3 to the half raised to the fourth power, which is really 3 squared. And 3 squared is 9. 12 minus 9 is 3. So when x is 3, y is 3. And so the parametric function looks like this. Now let's calculate the area under the shaded region between these two t values from 0 to 2, or when x goes from 0 to 4. So let's begin with this formula. The area is going to be the integral from alpha to beta, g of t times f prime of t dt. So we defined x to be f of t. So therefore, f of t is t squared. And g of t, we define that to be y. So that's going to be 4t squared minus t to the fourth power. Alpha is 0, beta is 2, based on the values that we see here. So let's replace g of t with 4t squared minus t to the fourth power. And then f prime of t, if f of t is t squared, f prime of t is 2t. And then we have dt. So let's distribute 2t to what we see here. 4t squared times 2t, that's going to be 8t to the third power. And t to the fourth times 2t, that's going to be 2t to the fifth power. The antiderivative of t cubed is going to be t to the fourth power over 4. And the antiderivative of t to the fifth is t to the sixth over 6. And let's evaluate it from 0 to 2. So if we plug in 2, 8 over 4 is 2. So that's going to be 2 times 2 to the fourth power. And then 2 over 6, we can reduce that to 1 third, and then times 2 to the sixth power. And if we plug in 0, the whole thing is 0. So let's make some space. So the area is going to be 2 to the fourth power, which is 16. And 2 to the sixth power, that's going to be 64. So we have 32 minus 64 over 3. Now we need to get common denominators. So let's multiply 32 by 3 over 3. And that's going to be 96 over 3 minus 64 over 3. 96 minus 64 is 32. So the area is 32 over 3. Now let's see if we can confirm that answer. So using these two parametric equations, let's write a function for y of x. So x is equal to t squared. If we square both sides, that means that x squared is equal to t to the fourth. So we can replace t squared with x, and we can replace t to the fourth with x squared. So we have y is equal to 4x minus x squared. So now we have y as a function of x. So we can say that f of x, which is y, that's 4x minus x squared. Now let's convert the t values to x values. So x is equal to t squared. And when t is 0, x is 0. And when t is 2, x is 4. So let's calculate the area from 0 to 4, f of x dx. The antiderivative of x to the first power is x to the second power over 2. And the antiderivative of x squared is x cubed over 3. 
let's evaluate it from 0 to 4. So let's plug in 4. 4 divided by 2 is 2, so we have 2x squared, or 2 times 4 squared, and then it's going to be 4 to the third over 3 minus 0. 4 squared is 16 times 2, that's 32. And 4 times 4 is 16 times another 4, that's 64. So we can see that we're about to get the same answer. So we know that 32 minus 64 over 3, if you multiply this by 3 over 3, you're going to get 96 over 3 minus 64 over 3, which will be 32 over 3. And so you have two ways in which you could find the area. You could find it as a parametric function, or you can get the function in terms of x, that is, get in y in terms of x, and just integrate it the old-fashioned way. But sometimes it might be difficult to eliminate the parameter t and get y in terms of x. In that case, just use the first method.